we believe that this message will be a blessing to you so I want you to stay glued and watch to the end and share to bless others this is Christocentric we have a lot of Apostle Eric Nyamiche's message on our platform kindly check them out thank you for watching stay blessed our belief system will always give rise to our conduct what we believe will give rise to our conduct teachings either by word or deed have effect on hearers now, so the teachings, whether by word or deed, has effect on hearers and viewers, especially when it is coming from elders or leaders, because what they do and say become a tradition for others to follow. Now, that is why Jesus cautioned that we always have to be careful of yeast. Matthew chapter 16, 5 to 7. And then I'll continue from 11 and 12. Matthew Matthew 16 from 5 when they went across the lake the disciples forgot to take bread they forgot to take bread be careful Jesus said to them be on your guard against the yeast of the Pharisees and Sadducees I used to say one say they discussed this among themselves and said, It is because we didn't bring any bread. And so let's jump to verse 11. Jesus had their discussion and he wanted to at least correct them, let them know that he's not talking about this that we put in bread. And so verse 11, how is it you don't understand that I was not talking to you about bread? Yes. 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 Be on your guard against the yeast of the Pharisees and Sadducees. Then they understood that he was not telling them to guard against the yeast used in bread, but against the teaching of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. He was just talking about the effect teachings of these strong sects have on the people and so we always have to be careful of the yeast be careful of the yeast if you have to stop it somehow do it don't allow it to take charge over the entire door and so when you see the negative that the negative effect of an action or inaction may have consequence on an organization on a family on yourself and the future you need to step in and set the record straight do it in the best way that you can but you see brothers and sisters you can never say i will not offend Listen, sometimes you have to say no to a benefactor. Yeah. Let me repeat that. Sometimes you have to say no to a benefactor. He might have supported your education, but it doesn't mean 
you have to give yourself to him in response to his kindness fear god she may be bringing in all the tithes but that doesn't mean that you have to close your eyes on her evil character you need to deal with that Sometimes you need to say no to your superior. He may be your boss, but it doesn't follow that you should yield to his or her advances. Fear God. Sometimes you need to say no to a friend. You need to say no to a friend. When his or her evil communication or dealings or stands may corrupt your good morals. Fear God. See, brothers and sisters, even children are supposed to obey their parents in the Lord. So, when what their parents are saying is against the Lord's commands, the Bible wants children even to be on the side of God. You can never say, I will not offend anyone. The great Billy Graham once said this, and I quote, Billy Graham, be attractive and winsome. Is somebody that uh, you are innocently beautiful. But do not compromise your convictions for the sake of popularity. If you are a leader, you will be confused when you want to follow propriety. Say, Shall we read together? Ready, go. Be attractive and winsome, but do not compromise your conviction for the sake of being popular. You need to say no to every ungodliness, no matter where it's coming from. You need to say no to every ungodliness, no matter where they are coming from. Now, let me remind you of Titus chapter 2 from verse 11. Titus 2 from verse 11. For the grace of God has appeared that offers salvation to all people. That same grace that gave birth to us, the Bible says that it teaches us to say no to ungodliness and worldly passion and to live self-controlled, upright, godly lives in this present age. It teaches us to say no to every ungodliness. In our daily walk with the Lord Jesus. We should remember as it were to draw the lines of resistance. Now set the boundaries clear. You know, tell yourself that as for this line, 
I will not cross. Don't let circumstances dictate to you as to what to do. Draw the lines, set the boundaries clear, and live within the bounds. Be a Christian. Hold your own spirit and don't let circumstances dictate to you. Don't indulge in your weakness. So, control your appetite. Control your appetite. Try. 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 Do not compromise your convictions for the sake of pleasing men. You should say no. You should say no to all ungodliness. Now, if you say no to all ungodliness, no matter where it's coming from, then you should not say, I will never offend anyone. See, the promise of God could be transgenerational. The promise of God could be transgenerational. And if you entertain evil, you may cut it. You may cut it short. You have to be careful because God wants to bless you, your children and your children's children. God wants the business that you have started today to grow beyond you. But be careful to bring God into the business and into your home. Now we find teachings on ancestral curses much attractive than teachings on ancestral blessings. Now God wants to bless you. Hey, let's turn to Genesis 18, verse 18 and 19. I want you to pay close attention to this scripture. Now, you pay close attention to this scripture. Abraham will surely become a great and powerful nation, and all nations on earth will be blessed through him. If we say Ampara Abraham beye oma eswa e ding na ni mu wo be shire wi ase amanyina for i have chosen him so that he would direct his children and his household after him to keep the way of the lord by doing what is right and just then the next word is so that the lord will bring about for Abraham what he has promised him his promise to him is that he's going to be a powerful nation and all the nations of the earth will be blessed through him and but for the promise to come to pass he has to raise his children well so that the lord will bring about for abraham what he has promised so when some of his children are not living right, he should be able to say no to what they are doing. To stand against, discipline them because they may truncate the blessing. You should never say, I don't want to offend Isaac. Remind Isaac of the blessings of the Lord and what she should do to stay at a place where the providence of God can flow through him. Yes. But there's a bad example in scripture that I want to bring up. And because this man probably didn't want to offend, it cut short God's providence and blessing that was supposed to be transgenerational in his family. 
or how can see to know when you mean sir no is to if you never see him first summer chapter two we'll read a long passage for um for the sake of clear understanding uh, so i'll start from verse 27 now a man of God came to Eli and said to him, This is what the Lord says. Did I not clearly reveal myself to your ancestors' family when they were in Egypt under Pharaoh? I chose your ancestors out of all the tribes of Israel to be my priests and to go up to my altar and burn incense and to wear an ephod in my presence. I also gave your ancestors' family all the food offerings presented by the Israelites. So because he wanted them to be priests, he also arranged that the people would even bring him them food. Na mi ye no Israel musu ya kwenye na mu se omedi me sofwa na omo afori muti aso ashe afodi e na onse edusham na onse asofotadi e no menim na me the Israel for ja afodi e ni na me ma weje fi. Yes. Why do you scorn my sacrifice? An offering that I prescribe for my dwelling. Why do you honor your sons more than me by fattening yourself on the choice part of every offering made by my people Israel? Now, I didn't see any mutia tia kuma for the air, any media near for the air. Masha said, One mono na any ever me tina biano suono. Now, would the woman a cinema? Say, Modi, me man Israel, I yed ye na mu adia, a di kaino, a yenemoho. Therefore, uh, therefore means therefore, as a result. A new teacher say, a symbiosia, nisun sanso, the God of Israel declares, this is what he's going to declare. But originally, he has said that he himself chose the family to serve him as priests. But now he is going to change his mind. But now the Lord declares, Far be it from me. Those who honor me, I will honor. But those who despise me will be disdained. God is saying that I chose your ancestors to serve me. I made provision for your house what to eat. So I don't expect you to go into my sacrifice, the offering that is made for me. I don't expect you and your children to do that, to go into it and disturb that offering. So he says, now declares the Lord. Those who honor me, I will honor. Them. But those who despise me, I will also despise. Now verse 31. The time is coming when I will cut short your strength and the strength of your priestly house. The strength of your priestly house. So that no one in it will reach old age. So I'll cut your strength. And your priestly house. So that no one in it will live to an old age. And you will see distress in my dwelling. Although good will be done to Israel, no one in your family, no one in your family line will ever reach old age. Now, say, who ye on your copon be ye Israel noa? A bema one who here and a dorsum. If we say, I could crep be rinka with you, every one of you that I do not cut off from seven at my altar, I will spare only to destroy your sight and sap your strength 
and all your descendants would die in their prime life. May the Lord cause this never to happen to any of us. Now, but this time the children were still alive. But listen, 34. And what happens to your two sons, Hophni and Phinehas, will be a sign to you. They will both die in the same day. I will raise up for myself a faithful priest who will do according to what is in my heart and mind. I will firmly establish his priestly house and they will minister before my anointed one always. So he takes Eli's house from there and then he says, I'm going to put another person's family there. Na o ye eli fie fo fi ho na o se mede onipa fofuru fie fo ebeba enti sei an o nyame kan o se na mama osofo no kwa fo so mafa obeye de e wo makoma mu ene me kra mu na mechichire efia etim ho mama no na wanante de masra no no enim ne na nyina then everyone left in your family line will come and bow down before him and then this him was referring to Samuel that small boy who came to live with Eli and his children for a piece of silver and a loaf of bread and plead, appoint me to some priestly office so I can have food to eat. Not yet. When they were not content with the food that God has made provision for them and they would rather eat from the Lord's table that which they were not supposed to eat, he said there is going to come a time that your descendants we even beg for a space in the priestly work so that they can even find some food to eat. But no one will appoint them. Now, it sounds like a little man on any money now, Titia, when you're going to go on a foot, yes, so now you're going to be a man, one say one fan or five tra, five when you're going to go on the account, when you say, and when you're going to be a man, one or say, dear, a becker will fear no, Beba Abe Koto, Neja. Na waje gete bona ene pan numuya na wakase mesreo famiche asofu juma no ba kubi mu na menya pan no bupre beko edi. See Eli's priestly line was cut short because of the behavior of his children yeah, and his failure to decidedly discipline them. Eli. Na sofu juma na wantu watu wa suono Wuchwa niti ya ewa ni mano ho Isanse wantu miye nsi kete Anti ya ni mano Ewa ni boni ya nuwa yenu See the old man Eli Tried to talk to his children But that was not enough It was not enough Listen to how he went about doing it First Samuel chapter 2 Verse 22 Uma ya mshia senia Eli o ye no Ewa Samuel huma edikai now Eli, who was very old, heard about everything his sons were doing to all Israel and how they slept with the women who served at the entrance of the tent of meeting. Now Afe Eli Akura, na Oti Adia, ne ma diriye Israel ni na no, ne sediye wone ema na wobeye shiye into madang ano edumano eda. Mm. Verse 23. So he said to them, now listen to you, Eli, why do you do such things? I hear from all the people about those wicked deeds of yours. Now catch there one say, I didn't see, and I'm here, son, see me, now me see, when some money, if you're man, you know, no, my sons, the report I hear spreading among the lost people is not good. If one person sins against another, God may mediate for the offender. But if anyone sins against the Lord, who will intercede for them? Now, is it time to be talking about philosophies? Now, say, Obiye, Obi Bonia. Onyankopon be pata mano na se obi e urade bonia 
Why, and now we be part of man or a failure or can and him the This is not time to question why. Why are you doing this? And give wise things that if someone has an issue with another, God may mediate for the fellow. If the person has an issue with God, who will do the mediation? Now, is it time to be talking about all this? And yes, he sir. should have been firmer in his resolve. At least you should have suspended these guys. You would have saved the priestly line. Huh? You would have saved that. But instead of being firmer, probably he didn't want to offend these boys. And he lost the future and the priesthood. His descendants were cut off from serving God as priests. And your bra what the Kenyans are saying near Sabre no air bra nest with me see a genae na or tea ne mano ne bet to me poa or two one saying a son send the bonia no way no na it can say or to me see a no quine na and chat na so for humanitya na the one year in tino and money shre as so for humano ne da chin cra or the money busiano. One day Kafas made a statement. Takro Kefa, I can see me. It is always good for someone to be sacrificed. For the redemption of many. Yes, a bribe mono, or do be bought for yes, and a bear do no, a benyanka. It is always good. A bea, a yeah, for Hophni and Phinehas to have been sacrificed so that the priestly line of Eli be kept. Yeah, yeah, Bosa, what did Hophni and Phineha, a bought for yes, send a bear, Aaron, not so for Duma, and Nam Elimu Ebano, a betwas. When Kephas realized that there was confusion and it may cause the displeasure of Rome because of how the people were praising Jesus Christ. Then he made a suggestion. I will read the suggestion to you in John chapter 11, verse 50. The suggestion, Cephas, the high priest at the time, who was also the leader of the council, gave. A black Kepha. Now, yes, of penny in the breast, so who knows them in Timmy who say air bar, or who's away and fast and debby and re Romano Niana or the Tufuno in ye. Let me start from forty nine, John eleven from forty nine. Then one of them, named Cephas, who was high priest that year, spoke up, You know nothing at all. Yes, Johannia Sempano, a Tidubaco, a thing you move at your nine and crown echo. Just seven years now, we move back. Be careful. Or this of penny, a phenomenon. See one say, "Mudi, mudi mushi." You do not realize that it is better for you that one man die for the people than the whole nation perish. Now, so many people say, "A year, mamu." Say, "Oni pa ba kumbi u amo mano na manu ni na ansei." What he's saying is this. Ya okeni. This statement is about Jesus. Ya okeni ne for Christo hum. But he's trying to say that you spare the rod. You spoil the child. A little living, when not dealt with, can work itself through the whole do, the entire do. So if this Jesus is going to be a problem, to the extent that Rome will come and destroy the whole of the Jewish nation. Let's take him out. And he says, "Hi, yes, we obey your how they are my end. I'm a Rome for you now. I'm a behind you, Rome. And you're in your free way. So even history knows that it was this Cephas who masterminded the death of Christ. And to show you, pa, not just say about custom address, a Cephas of Benino, or no, and no dear Nimu, pa, ma will come Christo. Because all of us. Who want to see anyone who suggested that Jesus should die as an enemy? Uh, but don't worry, because by his death we have bad life. So let's thank God for Kephas. But at least what he is saying is, is true. He is saying that when you find a thief in your institution, Taking him out. So that your whole institution is not destroyed. This is Kephas. Don't be afraid to offend. Offense is not bitterness. 
No matter what we do, offenses will come. Sometimes if you don't want to offend like Eli, you will lose the whole future. You spare the rod. You spoil the child. You spare the rod. You spoil the family. You spare the rod. You spoil the organization. You spare the rod. You disturb the future. It is impossible that offenses should not come. So never say that. As for me, I will never offend anyone. Sometimes, the man who took you to, who supported you in the university, you should say no to him. Say no to him. Say no to him. Say no to him. The one who took care of you when you were at the university, when he comes back, that you should pay him, find money and pay him. But not if your body. Don't cheat on your husband. Now, don't cheat on your wife. So don't entertain that man's advances. Say no to him. Now you have to be careful. So I don't want to offend this man. But you want to offend God? Fear God. Shall we rise in prayer? Shall we rise in prayer? Wherever you are, I want you to pray. And then resolve in your heart that if there's someone that you want to please, let it be God. Paul says that if I still please men, I will not be a servant of Christ. In our walk in this life, certainly, certainly, we may have we may have to step on a toe. Don't say. As for me, I will never offend anyone. If that one man wants you to offend God, offend the man and. Connect with God. Shall we pray? If for any reason you need to repent of any action, please do. Please repent. Lift up your voice wherever you are.